Hey y'all, this is David, the Georgia Photographer, and today I'm going to do a lens review on a 55mm f2.8 Rikonon lens. The Rikonon lens is an M42 mount lens, so I've got it adapted to my X-T3 with a just a simple adapter ring, and it screws in, there's nothing special there, but it does have a unique aperture ring function, so here in a minute, I'll get into that, and we'll talk about it some. My plan today is I'm going to go across a different bridge. I've got about an hour before I have to be back to the truck, so I'm going to see if I can't make this simple little loop here. I'm thinking it'll be pretty quick to go across what is known as the Veterans Bridge, back through the Art District, back across the Walnut Street Bridge to the truck. And I'm going to try to keep moving pretty good. I ain't going to try to stop very much. So what that's going to entail is me crossing a bridge I've never walked across. But it does have a pedestrian sidewalk on it because I've seen people running on it. So at least I know there's a way across. And I've got to get across this uh, Frazier Boulevard. And right now is my chance. Look at that. <sighs> hey, here's my first cool photo. Tattoo parlor. See if I can get something with this. I started out, I'm shooting at F2.8. It's already overcast, so I've got a lot of subdued light. There's no harsh shadows because it's overcast so heavily there is zero shadows. There's a I look like a traffic stop going on. So. I'm going on anyway. But once I get on the bridge, I'll probably stop it down to like F8 and do some scenery. But it's 55 mil, so that's like 80 on this XT3. And I kind of forgot that. And because I forgot that, the photo of the tattoo parlor didn't come out quite like I had anticipated. For some reason, I keep in my getting in my head that this is a 28 millimeter lens. But it's not, it's 55. So whatever, here we go. Something I just realized, this side's the only side of the Veteran Bridge that actually has a sidewalk. The other side just has a guardrail. I thought there were sidewalks on both sides, but when you walk across it, you notice there's only one. It's got a median, I guess you could technically walk in the median, but it's, yeah, there's no sidewalk. It's just a guardrail and rain outlets that dump into the river. But I've never walked across this bridge. I've driven over it a bunch of times. But I seen someone running on it the other day and I thought, hey, it is open to foot travel. So here I am. <laughs> All right, now let's see, I'm, out, I'm about in the middle. I'm out here to this little bird sanctuary island in the center of the river, so see, it's right there. There's your bird sanctuary right here. Um, that's the Hunter Museum. Of course, that's the Walnut Street Bridge, and behind it is the Market Street Bridge, and way behind it is the Ojati Bridge, which is the interstate. This whole hillside here is the Art District, and I think I might have a photo right here. Let's set up and see if we can get it. Yeah, we get over here to the art district, I'll tell you about this aperture ring. It's, it's got a unique aperture ring. The, the focus ring focuses, says yeah, about 0.8 meters to infinity, which is a little under three feet. So the close focus on it isn't all that spectacular. It's okay, but it's not great. Has an infinity hard stop and it seems to be pretty close. The front of the lens rotates, so Basically, if you have like a circular polarizer on it, that's gonna rotate with the lens and you'll, have, you'll be constantly chasing it. One, you know, you'll focus, then set your CPL kind of deal. But yeah, and the focus ring on it is about three quarters of an inch wide with about three eighths of an inch of grip area. And it's plenty, it works, it feels fine in the hand, so that's not a problem. But it's not very big because the lens is really compact. Since it's maximum aperture is f2.8, you don't get like a lot of size. The lens elements are actually quite small because of that. Now, this piece of art you see behind me here is kind of unique because here it is in a spot where basically nobody ever goes. It's got 
You can get to it by coming down this staircase here and coming down this sidewalk and across this crosswalk and then walking up the grass to it. But like, yeah, there's a sidewalk here, but nobody ever walks on that sidewalk. So it's like, it's just stuck out here in the middle of nowhere. But it actually has a little data plate, tells you a little bit about it. A lady named of Erica Strecker built it in 2007. She's welded her ID plate at the base of it and named it Connect. And it's a Pittman arm and a yoke assembly simulation. Out, you know, I'm assuming to give it some kind of industrial vibe. So I'm gonna take a photo of it. I'm still shooting at F8. I think I'll shoot this at F8, and then I'm gonna start going back to like F28. Uh, maybe, I mean, there's no real point in stopping down past F8 in all reality, unless I set it down and shoot like low, you know, long shutter stuff or something. But at that point, any lens pretty much is gonna perform pretty good. And the, and the images are looking pretty crisp at F8. So it says, dream, wonder, and imagine, but do not touch or climb. In other words, these are not interactive pieces. There's a little garden here. You can see there's there's the Veterans Bridge I just walked across. But this is the Bluff View Art District and they've got no photography signs, but what those actually mean is no pro photography. In other words, don't come in here and do portrait shoots or wedding shoots or engagement shoots. You can do those, but you have to get permission. These are pretty interesting little pieces of art. I mean, this is just an amalgamation of scrap Looks like some good round stock, actually. I could have used it in a machine shop, but <laughs> he probably got paid pretty well to make that. <laughs> Over here is one that looks interesting to me. I'm just curious. There it is, torsos. Ernest Trovo, Walking Jackman, 1985. It's interesting, ain't it? made jacks, giant jacks, basically. Bolted them together. That's pretty cool. All right. And then they got some tops in the middle. Some little statues of women holding different things. I'm not sure if that's some kind of a special material or what, but it looks like it's burnt out with a torch. Actually, it does. It looks like it's, it's flame cut out of solids. It's exactly what it is. Huh, interesting. That was a lot of work. Do all that with a torch and cut it like that. Now look here. You can see they actually had to weld back in a few places, but these are these are flame cut torch marks where he took a giant gas axe and just blowed away the metal a little at a time, carving this out of blocks of steel. Interesting. I've never seen artwork done that way. Huh. And then he welded where he had to put it back to make eyes and things. But they closed apparently this at night. It's got gates. But, oh, if you come around that hedge, which I didn't do, it comes on down through here to more stuff. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Okay, to discuss this feature that I noticed on the aperture ring, what it is is it has, it has aperture clicks. The center is wide open unlike any other aperture ring one side or the other is fully open and then you move it to fully close the center of this one is open f28 and then as you rotate it clockwise facing the front it goes to f22 on the manual position side and then you go back the other way i'm not sure exactly how this works it still stops it down just like any other lens. But the other way goes towards auto. So apparently the, uh, the camera had an auto aperture control function and you could set like the smallest the aperture would be with that function. So center is F2.8. Here's another unique thing about it. It has a five bladed aperture. So it's gonna have nice five pointed stars, but it looks like a Pentagon when it stops down. It's not round in any way, it's a pentagon. So it's gonna make for some cool sun stars. But yeah, I thought that was pretty neat. That it goes from F28 to F22 and then F28 to F22 in the other direction. And I'm pretty sure, let me unscrew it off of the adapter, that it has one of those auto aperture plungers. Yeah, it does right there. There it is. So 
thought, yeah, that's a pretty cool little feature. I've never seen that before. Well, I've stopped it down to F4 from F2.8 because at F2.8, it has this, it's not quite softness. It's more like it's blooming. It's just hazy around the edges, you know. You could call it soft, I guess. But at F4, I'm curious to see how it turns out. Rail looks good. He's kind of blurry. Then again, it's motion blur, so I can live with it. It has a look. It looks like the the lens sharpens right back up if you just stop it down one click on the aperture. And that's the thing is it's whole stop increments on the aperture clicks. Let's see here. Did I have something else I was going to say about it? Pretty much no. That's it. It's kind of plain vanilla short of that. It seems to take good photos. It has good color. But... Other than that, it's just a cool little lens. I found it in a, in a bargain bin at a camera shop in Asheville, North Carolina. I just throwed the dice and grabbed it. All right, well, I'm back to the truck and I actually made it back on time. But the, the lens at F4 ain't too bad. It's a pretty cool little lens. And like I said, I found it in the bargain bin. They didn't even have lens caps on it when I bought it. I probably paid too much for it, but no. Uh, it was kind of a neat little idea to give it a shot. It's nice all metal lens. And it's got pretty clean optics. It wasn't like the optics ain't beat up and the focus mechanism is smooth. And it's actually quite buttery. It feels really good. It looks a lot like a um, Asahi, you know, an SMC or an Asahi optical, like an old Pentax lens. Kind of has that look to it, but the, but the mechanism for the aperture is a little different. So. If it is, then they modified the design to suit their needs. Either way, yeah, it was cool to get the X-T3 out and shoot with it a little while today. Just like my stream said the other day, why do I need yet another camera? I have so many, I can't even use the ones I have. So, if you don't have so many that you can have trouble picking one, get the one you do have and get it out and go take a picture with it. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.